Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more interesting stories like these. Now, let's get into today's story video. I found out my girlfriend was cheating on me. Sorry for the big text, but it's worth reading. In all, we have been together for four years and six months, and we have been dating since 2017. Since 2017, I've been in a relationship with this lady. We have had to continue studying because I was not approved to go, and she has had to deal with the death of a very close family member since starting college in the capital in 2020. But because of the pandemic, she spent about six months here still close to me, and we continued to see each other on a regular basis. While we had a difficult year in which we fought frequently and ended up splitting up at the end of it, we got back together a few weeks later and realized that we had a lack of communication between us, which was resolved, our relationship improved dramatically, and I promised her that I would visit her more frequently once your in-person classes resumed, which I have since done. Our partnership was fantastic while we kept the year. 2021 in mind. Because of our conversation agreement, we didn't have any conflicts or anything like that, which enhanced our closeness, and I was doing my part to keep my half of the deal. During the second part of the year, things started to change dramatically. Because I had suffered several setbacks since September, including the discovery of a rare genetic condition, thrombocytopenic purpura, which required multiple specialists in exams, becoming refractory with the Army and preparing for the Anum, our most recent meeting was held at the end of August, when I went on vacation. After that, our next meeting was held at the beginning of December, National High School exam, which I failed. Although this was the case, I persevered in my efforts to meet with her. I made myself accessible to her in September, but she rejected, stating she was already overcommitted. It was on Halloween in October that I attempted to visit, but she refused, claiming she had a college paper to deliver, which turned out to be a lie, as on Saturday the 30th, I asked her if she wanted to watch something for Discord, and she responded that she was going to an after-hours party in a ballad, which I only discovered when she told me that if I didn't ask, I'd never know. And although I sought to meet up with her on two occasions in November, once before Adam after I had completed my study program and once after the test, I was always unable to do so due to a variety of circumstances. I arrived on the 3rd of December, which was my first day. She was still reluctant to say that there were too many events, but I went anyway. When I arrived, she was entirely unaffected by my presence. During all this time without seeing me, she expressed that she missed me, that she loved me, that she was anxious to see me. On the first day of my stay, everything was fine. However, on the second day, things started to get strange. She refused my kisses at times, and when I attempted more intimate touches, she tried to stop me with jokes, and finally, the night before we went to sleep, we had a conversation in which she stated that I was in doubt. I asked her why and what it was but she refused to tell me. I physically moved away from her that night, but she dragged me close and stated that on the following Sunday, we went to watch a television series together, and she spent most of the time talking on her cell phone. I inquired as to who it was, and she replied that it was a friend celebrating a birthday, and after a while, we had another conversation in which she stated that she was enjoying another one. I became extremely upset and went to sleep in the living room. We argued but ultimately decided to sleep together again. I woke up on Monday morning and immediately went to her phone to see if anything was going on, and I discovered that she had been in a parallel relationship with this guy since early October. I jumped out of bed and began packing my belongings so that I could return home with my family that afternoon. During the operation, she regained consciousness, and I informed her that I had read the messages and understood everything. At that point I began to say numerous things to her, to which she just listened without saying anything back. Given that I had missed the bus that would have transported me to the bus station, I ended up having to remain at her house for a while until I could make it to the bus station in sufficient time. The conversation I attempted with her before I left turned into more of an outburst in which I told her not to do this type of thing with anyone else and that if she wanted to break up, she should just talk about it rather than declaring herself single and starting a relationship while still in my company. She had sent me an apology as soon as I got back to my house which I categorically denied, and I attempted to contact her again by message, in which I revealed to her that I had purchased engagement rings for her, and that I was open to a conversation, but she was extremely harsh with me and stated that she had nothing else to say, and as a result, we both ended up blocking each other. Because of a fortunate discovery this week, I was able to record all of her conversations with him since the beginning of October. 
leading me to believe that she knew him still in September, since I visited her in August, and there were photos showing that he slept at her house, had with her, and everything else that she was up to. She stayed the month of November all alone at home because her older sister had traveled with her mother, and of course some messages that proved she was lying to her mother too so he could go to sleep there. As a result of my being on her side, I observed a lot of weird things, including the fact that our condoms were vanished, she was drinking tea, which is said to be abortive, and she had a vaginal infection. Aside from that, based on the conversations I overheard on her mobile phone, the man was aware that she was compromised since she told him everything she did or said to me when she was in my company. It was as a consequence that the condom packet I had placed there was no longer accessible. My frustration and disappointment stemmed from the fact that I was going through a terrible period with my health and schooling, I was weary, and all I wanted to do was spend time with my partner. However, when I arrive, she is still in a relationship, and we have been barred from all social networking sites, including Facebook. The worst part is that I still have feelings for her, but I don't want to go back to the place where she betrayed me because I can't forgive her. I wonder if she is experiencing any remorse, guilt, or something similar. I have never been unfaithful to her. I've always been a guy who provided her with unconditional support and encouragement at all times, and I have never failed to express affection or love to her. The worst part is that I have never been unfaith. I used to be quite jealous of her, but that feeling gradually faded as I came to trust her more and more with each passing day. The situation has become untenable for me, and while I still want to speak with her, she has turned away and behaved as if I had been the one who had turned against her. It's also possible for me to accept betrayals in exceptional circumstances, such as my spouse didn't respect me slash treated me horribly, but this woman arose who treats me beautifully and I choose her. However, this was not the case with me. I always treated her with respect, showering her with affection, attention, support, gifts, and anything else I could think of. We had incredible. When I visited her in December, we had some quiet moments during which she instinctively told me that I'm out standing in bed and we had a great time together. When I thought about it, I hoped I could do more for both of us, but I'm not totally self-sufficient yet, and I'm still a student which frustrates me a great deal. During the time she was anorexic and suffering from nervous bulimia, I was there for her. Previously, I had taken many knives away from her and treated her for various wounds, and I was there while she was suffering mental and despair crises and contemplating suicide. In order to be with her when she was mentally sick, I had to leave the house multiple times before morning because of the danger in my neighborhood. While she was still living in the same city as me, whenever her family would leave her alone at home with no food or anything else, I would go to the store and buy her some food and give it to her so she wouldn't go hungry. When she was being followed and tortured at school, I was there to shield her from the danger. When she expressed a desire to drop out of medical school, I pushed her to continue. Hey, it's fine. I'm here to assist you. I know things may be tough for you, your mother and your sister. But I'm here to help. I'll even work a shift to support you while you study to pursue your goal. You don't have to give up, I said as I wiped away her tears. As a result of my telling her, she was at her house with someone else at the time I needed her the most. At it, I know she's simply been waiting along to take on the man, since they're really together. At it too. I discovered she's been slandering my name to her pals. God help me. I don't deserve to be going through this. 